Hello, everyone, and welcome to this midday chat. We're here with Sean Clark, and I'm Felicia Dunn with Fair You Trust. Sean, do you want to give us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm a trails coordinator with Bear Uba Land Trust. I mostly work with the trail adopters and I get out and maintain our trails, make sure they're all open and, and safe for the community to use. And I'm going to be talking with you guys uh, a little bit about what I do with the Land Trust and why this work is so important. Awesome. And a little bit about me. My name is Felicia and I've been with the Land Trust since August of 2018 and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator. So I oversee the volunteer program and the youth programming and we're excited to give this chat today and tell you a little bit more about our trails. So we have an agenda. Let me just share that with you really fast. So today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the history of the land trust and our trails. And then we're going to explore some popular community trails such as the Lytton Trail and the Allen Thiessen Trail on Adam Ryan Preserve and the Hirschman Trail. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can help support community trails and answer any questions if there are any. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. Sean, do you want to just give us a history of the trails and the role the Land Trust plays in maintaining our trails? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we started in the early 90s. Uh, we're, we're a grassroots organization. We started as Nevada County Land Trust. And that was a group of people who were concerned about preserving the rural and, and scenic quality of life here in Nevada County and, and the surrounding area. and uh, I'm very grateful to that original founding group, and, and we should all be very grateful to, to them for having this vision of, of conserving some land, creating some trails, and some recreation opportunities to get outside. So this grassroots group that got together, uh, most land trusts are, the work is mostly around conserving land. It's a little unusual to to have such a large, uh, a robust trails department. We have over 45 miles of trails that uh, we maintain. And so it's a little unusual to have this in our land trust, but we're very grateful for, for providing that and being able to have that role in this community and, and build these trails and work with the community to maintain these trails. We're gonna get into some of the partnerships, but all of these projects involve working with other people in the community. Um, the land trust uh, can't do this on their own and, and can't do this without volunteers and members. So we're still uh, a very grassroots organization to this day. And um, Felicia and I are kind of a one-two punch. I get out there and work with the volunteers on the trails. She helps me do some of the recruitment and some of the outreach. So we work in tandem with getting interested parties plugged into the trails department and helping us accomplish some projects out on the land. Awesome, yeah. So maybe you can dive a little deeper into the process it takes to like work with these community partners to build these trails. I know it's a long process, but maybe you can just walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We can do some some kind of case study examples. Um, one of our first trails that we started working on uh, was the Lytton Trail. And we're gonna get into that kind of towards the end of the presentation. But that is a good example of working with the city of Grass Valley um, on the paved portion. We work with Sierra College for the, the portion of the Lytton Trail that, that goes around the campus. Uh, we have uh, agreements with Nevada Union the trail kind of goes um, beyond Sierra campus, the Sierra College campus into NU. And then we hold a trail easement up by Escaton to finish off that connectivity. Uh, a big thing we look for in our trails is having some connectivity. We wanna 
connect people to work, connect people to school, connect people to each other. Um, this is very important. A lot of our trails are sort of uh, shorter in town trails that are gonna provide uh, a really important role in the community. Another uh, case study to just briefly share that's fresh in my mind is, is Rice's Crossing. We just recently completed some trails on the north end, which is up by Bullard's Bar Reservoir. And uh, we worked with the Bureau of Land Management in expanding that trail system. And we have a, a good history of working with BLM and we're able to get agreements in place to uh, build trails on their land. Uh, we also have that uh, an agreement with BLM for the parking area for the Cascade Canal Access Trail. So not only are we working with these higher level uh, federal and state agencies, but we're also working on the more local level with other nonprofits um, in a variety of ways. Awesome. And we're going to talk more about that a little bit later. But first, we should back up a little bit. You mentioned trail easement. So what exactly is a trail easement for people who might not be familiar with that term? Great question. So we have, there's a lot of different ways these trails kind of coming to come into being. And uh, they, they can kind of evolve and change over time as well. So we have trails on land that we own. Those are preserves that we encourage you all to get out and explore. So there are trails on land trust properties. And then we also have trails that are on other people's properties. And those are on easements where the property owner has granted an easement to allow, legally, to allow the public to use their land for the purposes of the trail. So this is a document. So they enter into an agreement with the land trust um, there is a, a document involved and, and this gets recorded. So it stays, this is in perpetuity. The, the, the work that the land trust does is forever. So this trail easement deed, if we're lucky enough to get granted one from a landowner, will get recorded at the recorder's office and then that stays with that deed. So if that parcel changes hands, we still have our trail easement secured. So there are a variety of ways. And then we also have trails where, for example, um, City of Nevada City Trails, where we helped build them either through grant funding or working with the city. And, um, and we're helping them maintain them. So we're not, we're not holding an easement or owning the land, but we've been recognized as, as having expertise in the trails realm um, in both Grass Valley and Nevada City. And these cities have wanted to partner with the land trust. They see us doing a good job working with the community and they've entrusted us. This is a really wonderful thing and we're very thankful for this partnership, but they've entrusted us to maintain uh, the trails on their property. So um, that's just one example of, or many examples of the different agreements we have with these trails. So they're all just a little bit different and how each one kind of starts is a little bit different too. Um, so it's just kind of a case by case basis or a, a trail by trail basis, if you will. Awesome, great, yeah. So you mentioned connectivity and the land trust does maintain and continues to build trails. Can you touch a little bit about the connectivity piece and how that works? Yes, absolutely. Um, traffic uh, uh, pollutes. Uh, traffic just gets kind of worse and worse. It can uh, be a safety concern too. If you've tried to uh, mountain bike or, or road bike or sometimes even walk along some of our hilly windy trails we have in the foothills. And we'd like to identify opportunities to get people off the shoulder, to get people off the road. Let's get them out in nature when we can. Um, if we can get people to, to school, to work, without having to get into their cars, this is a good thing. We're, we're saving the air quality and, and, and we're, you know, having less traffic out on the road. So we want to identify spots and, and this is a great place where the community has stepped up and they've even offered suggestions of, of prime opportunities where a, a trail easement or, or trail connectivity would be fantastic. 
Um, so we want to identify these spots and then go through the necessary steps to start to look at if we can make this, this trail a reality. So yeah, the, the connectivity piece is really important. And we hear, we hear this a lot. So we work with bonk, we work with, with running groups, with walking groups, um, equestrian groups, and, and, and everyone wants connectivity. That, that's kind of a no brainer. Um, some of the easier opportunities have already been constructed, but um, that, doesn't, that doesn't hold us back from looking at other ways to, to move forward and identify other opportunities. I will say that we build multi-use non-motorized trails is what we focus on. So mm -hmm. if you're interested in, in some of these other things, motorized trails, um, we can reach out to us and, and we can get you in touch with the right, with the right groups. But we're mostly building uh, multi-use non-motorized. Great. And yeah, and that's super important because like you mentioned, the equestrians, they have horses going out on the trails, bicyclists of Nevada County, mountain biking. So managing these trails for different groups is really important. And that's a big part of what we do. And maybe we can start mentioning how we maintain these trails. So it might be a little different to maintain a trail meant for horse use versus bicyclists. Maybe you can touch on that. Yes, absolutely. And, and I want to say for the most part, our community does a great job of, of working together with the multiple user groups. I do hear from other listservs, other trail organizations that you know, the equestrian people are battling with the cyclists and the cyclists with the runners and on and on. So I just want to mention that um, for the most part here in Nevada County, Yuba County, surrounding areas, we do a good job working together, sharing the trail. And I just want to just, just make a point, like we're, we're all in this together. So let's be nice to each other when we're out there. Um, I like the spirit of howdy, which is you kind of, you make eye contact and you say hello you acknowledge each other's existence. We're all, we're all sharing these trails together, so let's be kind uh, while we're out there. So as I mentioned, we have over 40 miles of trails, 45 miles of trails. It just keeps growing. And, and I can't get out there and maintain it all myself, um, and, the, and the Bear Yuba Land Trust staff can't. So we rely very heavily on, on the community, on our, our trails volunteers, on our trail adopters and other people who, who we've kind of trained and, and empowered to get out there and, and, and maintain these trails. So the adopt a trail program has been a real boon for the land trust. It's very similar to adopt a highway. If, if you're interested, uh, reach out. I think we're, we're gonna get on the website later and, and show you some trails are orphan trails and, and need adoption. But again, this is a, uh, this is kind of the next step um, beyond being a, a volunteer. You can decide to adopt a trail and there's an agreement involved with that and you'll enter into an agreement with the land trust. And it involves walking the trail regularly and maintaining the trail, but also being kind of a liaison and being our eyes and ears. So if there's a, the, the biggest things are, are safety concerns and, and maintenance concerns. Safety is our, our number one priority at Bear Yuba Land Trust. We need to make sure that if you're out there working on the trails, you've been trained, you've signed a waiver, and you know what you're doing. Um, this, is, this is very important. And uh, yeah, so the safety concerns and the maintenance concerns are so that you can kind of be our eyes and ears, let us know when a tree comes down in the storm, if there's an erosion issue, uh, I think we'll get into a little bit more of the, the nuts and bolts of maintenance and what we're looking for. But this trail adopter is very important and, and maintaining these trails is a big job. If you've ever done land management, land clearing on your own property, you know that the, the vegetation doesn't stop growing and you know the nature of a trail, we opened up the canopy and created more light and everything wants to grow towards the light and grow into the light. So the vegetation constantly kind of needs to be trimmed back. Yeah, and I noticed on some of our more popular trails, they don't really need that much maintenance because people are hiking on them all the time. They really get a lot of use. So that's another way you can kind of passively help out the land trust and maintaining our trails is just go hiking and then 
report back if you do see any of these issues or if you do want to get more involved become a trail adopter or considering you know donating to us so that we can help maintain these trails absolutely we, we have this saying the trails don't maintain themselves uh, getting back to this the, the grassroots nature of our organization we do rely on members we rely on donations so please if you value trails and open space like i do like felicia does <laughs> please consider becoming a member and donating to the land trust yes and you mentioned you know everything kind of grows up into the trail and we need to train our volunteers what kind of tools do you use out on the trails or what techniques do you use in either creating trails or you know building trails maintaining them absolutely this is my, i love this stuff this is like my favorite so i i encourage you all to to come out and volunteer with me out on the trail hold on we have a, a truck going by here and i like to pitch these volunteer days as not only exercise but it's a very good uh learning opportunity training opportunity to to learn what tools we use and how to use them safely and effectively so the i would say there's three main tools and it's going to be a pulaski a mcleod and loppers and those three tools we're going to be able to do the majority of our work um, the majority of our work is going to be clearing back the vegetation and making sure that water is getting off of the trail tread water is our number one enemy of the trail erosion so these are the kind of things when we talk about training and empowering our volunteers and our volunteer force that we want you to be looking for. Ideally, the trail tread is out sloped so the water is sheeting across the trail and not using it as a drainage. So a, a, a perfect example of what we might work on during a volunteer work party is using the McLeods and the Pulaskis to kind of recontour and kind of regrade the trail to reestablish that outslope. The trail becomes dished and entrenched, and that's just from normal wear and tear and from normal use. So we'll train you guys and how to do that and gals how to do that. Um, and along with cutting back the vegetation, there are ways that we can try to limb up the trees. So instead of removing the entire thing or topping it, we can try to keep the tree or, or shrub, whatever, whatever we're referring to, and almost, you know, kind of take off the limbs growing towards the trail corridor and be able to leave that tree, um, but just kind of still keep the corridor open. So um, the McLeod and, and Pulaski's, which are some of my favorite, are, are firefighting tools. The McLeod has a, a rake on one end and kind of a fatter, wider hoe on the other end and the rake is going to be great um a lot of our volunteers like trail construction more than maintenance mm -hmm. but we often uh you know we might there might be a year where we don't build any trails and then there might be a year where we're, we may build one or two trails so we're you know there's not a lot of opportunities for the construction there's going to be more opportunities for the maintenance but the mcleod's going to be great one of the first steps is getting the organic matter and the duff out of the way so it's going to be great for that kind of stuff. If we got to spread wood chips, if we got to uh, spread gravel, um, these are all things we do during volunteer work parties. Maybe we have to clear an area for a burn pile, and and the rake side of that McLeod is going to work wonderful. It also can work kind of as a tamping a tamping tool. Um, the 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 Pulaski is a little bit more like an it has an axe bit on one side and then kind of a smaller hoe. Kind of an ads on the other side this is going to be more chopping uh splitting cutting um grubbing out roots that kind of thing um if we need to pry rocks um we you know the right tool for the job so we're going to the, the uh, pulaski is going to be more of a prying uh, a prying tool um and the mcleod's going to be a little bit more grading a little bit more finishing um and i love to talk about the tools and get into the tools so uh, here again, if you have, have questions, comments, uh, tools I like, you know, reach out to the land trust. We, we are, we are uh, I see us as a resource to the community. 
with, with, some, with some give and take. So, so yeah, if you have questions about uh, what we're looking for out on the trails or um, what tools we like, uh, please reach out and, and don't hesitate. I can speak from experience when I was first getting started with the land trust, never built a trail before, didn't really use any of these tools. And I just got out there, used these in the clouds, Pulaski's, and we built a portion of the Wolf Creek Trail. And now it's there. And whenever I go hiking, I can kind of go down to that section and say, I did this. And it's really awesome to see something that you created with your own hands and then everyone can enjoy it. So that's a really big draw for people who want to help build trails or even, you know, maintain them, just get outside and then do a hard day's work. And then you can really see your efforts at the end of the day as well. Yes. Great, great way to give back to the community. The, the, the sense of satisfaction is huge. And, and even when you're out there uh, doing some maintenance with me, people will be thanking you, giving you high fives, giving you a mm -hmm. thumbs up saying, great job. I love what you're doing. Um, so for the most part, it is very uh, feel-good work. Yes, it is. And another thing just popped into my mind about maintaining these trails. We are, you know, helping to get the water off of them, but we're also helping to remove some of these invasive plants that could pose as fire hazards. So can you speak a little bit about how trails help maintain, you know, fire risk and help mitigate that or even provide routes to get away from a fire or escape from a fire? Yes, fantastic. It does definitely play into, there's a, a public safety piece to this uh, without a doubt. So I would, of course, there are a lot of, um, you know, annual grasses, annual things that, that cause trouble. Uh, in the trails department, I'm mostly going to be uh, focusing on the Himalayan blackberry and the scotch broom are probably going to be my two biggest uh, species that I see growing along the trail corridor that, that create an issue. Um, we do have um, some scotch broom poles. We do have a, um, a stewardship team at the Land Trust that also does uh, focus a little more on invasive species removal, eradicate, eradication, but there is a little overlap with the, you know, with the stewardship and the restoration and the trails for sure. So um, let's think of some examples. Recently this spring, we were on the wildflower trail um, that is inundated with scotch broom and had um, uh, a lot of scotch broom removed. We used the weed wrenches. Here again, partnerships. We'll often borrow those from the Fire Safe Council and get out there and, and, and do some scotch broom abatement. And then the um, Himalayan blackberry, that comes into the grubbing tool, the Pulaski's. That's a great tool that we use for grubbing out the, the Himalayan blackberry. And then once we remove it, we'll either, um, we'll pack it out, we'll haul it off, or we will uh, have burn, we, we'll have some burn piles um, to get rid of that material. So yeah, both those materials, I think especially the scotch broom, do, it is an oily plant. It, po it does pose a, a threat to fire. It could definitely help spread fire. It has that height, has that ladder fuel height going on that we don't like to see, right? We either want stuff down on the ground or we want stuff limbed up six feet, eight feet. We want to try to get rid of some of that ladder fuel and that uh, Himalayan blackberry, same kind of thing. It's growing in that zone that can get the fire from the ground up into the trees, which we want to, which we want to avoid. Um, yeah, and then the, the connectivity piece, it just as simple as that. It's providing a safe route. It's a trail. Say the roads are, the, a tree fell down on the road. The roads have too much traffic. The roads are blocked. You know, if you can take the Litton Trail, the Deer Creek Trail, any alternative access to get to safety, the trails could potentially come in um, to, to help with something, to help around that. So, yeah, and then um, the other public safety piece would be the mile markers out on the trails that we want to do more of. So if there is an incident or something is happening, we can more quickly pinpoint the location of, of the incident and where something might be. So yeah, definitely the mile markers and then reducing the um, invasive species does de definitely helps with the uh, public safety piece. Yeah, and I love the mile markers too because you could go out you know, two and a half miles and then realize, oh, I'm too tired to go back. But if you see those mile markers along the way, you can kind of gauge how tired you are and, and choose when to go back according to those mile markers as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and just getting back to the safety piece and, and talking about the plants, just want to mention poison oak. Some people are really sensitive to it. It, it can be seen as a, as a public safety concern. So again, it, you know, if it's a land trust trail, you know, getting back to the safety concern piece, please, um, you know, reach out to Felicia or myself, let us know. And then with the tools, again, we don't think we're going to get too much into the safety being this being a virtual kind of interaction here but again encouraging you to to come volunteer with myself or or, or other land trust programs and um we'll, we'll go over uh some of the safety stuff when you, when you volunteer with me uh related to the tools because we want to make sure you're you know again that's number one um and then the, the second thing is that we have some fun while we're out there that is important um and then we'll, we'll get some work accomplished um no doubt while we're out there with the group Great. And before we dive into the website, I just want to touch on one or two more safety points. So a lot of these trails are in pretty rural areas like the Yuba Rim Trail. Just being aware that there are rattlesnakes or mountain lions, you know, always hike with a buddy. Do you have anything to, you know, any tips on how to stay safe out on the trails? Yeah, that that's... You know, it's a lot of this common sense stuff, bringing water, bringing a snack, bringing some fruit. Um, I, I love that. Um, hike with a buddy. You know, that's great advice. And, uh, and, and yeah, it would be good to just refresh yourself with what to do in case you do encounter um, one of these animals, you know. Um, and we have some signage up on, uh, up on some of the trails. But, yeah, I would imagine as the weather's getting warmer, you know, rattlesnakes may be coming out. Of course, there's ticks. Uh, you should be giving yourself a tick check and your animals a tick check, um, you know, every time you're coming back in from a trail. Um, you know, we love our furry friends, but we want to we want to make sure they're not bringing things into the house as well. Uh, and poison oak, too. I've heard uh, horror stories of uh, the dog have, or the animal having the, the oils on the fur and then you getting it from petting the animal. So yeah, those kind of safety tips. I know a lot of people like the hiking poles mm -hmm. as well that can kind of um, take a little stress off the knees, off the joints. Uh, I know I'm getting older and, and can appreciate some of that as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of those sort of common sense things, not letting your blood sugar uh, get too low, uh, having a compass, having a whistle. You know, on your way, you could pay attention to the cell phone service as well uh, on your way out you might just make note the last point that you had service if you're going to that kind of a remote um, location mm -hmm. and i'd say the most important safety gear that you can have is a map so that's a good segue into looking at our website so let me just pull that up really fast so this is our website and on it we have our trails portal so if you hit trails it'll pop up with this screen and this has more information that sean was talking about today just what is a trail easement why trails matter here's the adopt a trail which we'll look at in a little bit and then again here's a link to donate to trails so you can help support us help us maintain and build these trails to increase you know public safety and get everyone outside and recreating i want to bring your attention to the trails portal and this is kind of the hub of trails in our area and these have some really excellent maps and resources so that you don't get lost on a trail because I know some of these trails, some of the signage is a little ambiguous or there are a bunch of social trails. And I know that's something that maybe you can talk to some of these social trails offshoots. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So we, I really can't mention the history of, of the trails department without mentioning Bill Hare. And Bill Hare worked for the Forest Service for for many years and he was in the trails department among other things and he really helped get get some of this these trails started um here in and around nevada city and grass valley and so we use that same kind of dark brown on white kind of arrows and um historically and trail signs so it's just kind of people are kind of used to seeing that color scheme and those arrows 
So here again, we do our best to include wayfinding arrows, to include uh, you know, trailhead signs, and we use the, the Forest Service standard. So it should be similar to what you're seeing out in nature. And just want to mention, there is consensus around how to maintain these trails and build these trails. We do work with California State Parks, um, mostly on the Independence Trail, and their standards are very similar to the Forest Service. And we've also hosted IMBA, which is the International Mountain Biking Association. We've had them helped uh, two or three different times. They've come out and done workshops. And again, there is a consensus on how these need to be built, how these need to be maintained for sustainability and for longevity. And we've, we've sort of inherited this Forest Service standard uh, from Bill Hare, but from all the stuff that I've read and that I've seen, uh, it is very thorough. Um, it's very good. I can even uh, share with you some of the books that I refer to when I'm challenged with how to get, you know, we're, we're in sloped and we got to get the water off or how to address certain issues that arise out there. Um, so I just wanted to mention Bill Hare and our hats off to him for all the great work that he's done along with those original uh, founders and volunteers to really get these trails started uh, here in, in Nevada County. And uh, yeah, so some of the user trails, you know, some of that is, um, is just people kind of not staying on the trail. So that's also an important thing. Um, people like to cut the switchbacks and that just creates erosion and creates maintenance challenges. So we really just want to stay uh, on the trail. And, and here again, if you're really, if you are getting confused out there, again, we want this to be a relationship and, um, and let us know where you're getting turned around and where you're getting confused out there. And I'll be happy to, to answer your, your specific question. Great. So again, you can see all of these trails that are around our area. Here's the South Uber River State Park and then Penn Valley up to Nevada City and Grass Valley and down here in Alta Sierra. So this is kind of like an overall comprehensive map and maybe we can look at one trail that is, maybe we could look at the Lytton Trail first. Over here, if you're scrolling on our website, you can see trails by interest, which gives you length altitude change if you're you know, interested in a specific kind of trail or a specific area. Again, this is kind of just a hub of local trails. So let's go to Grass Valley and then Lytton Trail. And I like to mention that all of these trails are available in portable card versions. And if you go to our shop, you can buy the trail cards. So they're a pack of cards with the maps and the description. And that's another way that you can help support us as well. If you, you know, buy them for yourself or a friend, it's a really great way to just donate back to the land trust and you get this wonderful resource as well. So under every trail, there is a map and then downloads so you can take it with you where you can find it online, where it is, and then some information as well as like the rules and how to get there. So Sean, did you want to talk about the Lytton Trail specifically? If there were any, you know, something special about it or any stories that you had about this trail? Yeah, well, we kind of we kind of started off, and I, I think it's a good example of our partnerships and um, just the multitude of, of groups we work with. I mean, this is just one trail, and we're working with quite a few different people to make it happen. Um, I mentioned the City of Grass Valley, uh, Sierra College, uh, Nevada Union, and then we have then we hold an easement granted to us by Escaton, and then we have a um, one team has adopted the paved section. We have another person who's adopted the Escaton easement. So it just goes to show that um, in each trail, there is, it, it takes a lot to make it happen. It takes a lot of people working together. Um, I hear again, the land trust can't do it alone. And we really do rely on our partnerships and, and working with the community. I think this is probably one of our most popular trails, uh, maybe up there with Hirschman's and you know, maybe some sections of the 
Deer Creek Tribute Trail. And I would like to think if you go walk this trail, you're going to bump into somebody you know. <laughs> and it's just kind of fun to say, oh, you know, good to see you out here. Um, and that kind of a thing and just kind of meet your neighbor. And I just want to share quickly um, why, why trails are important to me uh, on, a, on a personal note. Um, is, is trails help me get grounded. I can spend a lot of time kind of in my head and, you know, maybe worried about this or worried about that. And it seems like when I go for a nice long walk or I get out on a trail, it just kind of centers me and, and kind of grounds me. And I might see a cool bird or see a cool wildflower and stuff like that. But I think it's really kind of internal for me that it just kind of centers me and relaxes me a little bit. So I'd love to hear, um, again, wanting some more interaction from the community, what, what you guys uh, like about trails and, and why you think they're important. But they're important for me uh, just to get grounded and to check back in with myself. And then I feel like I can revisit the world, re-enter the world, kind of revisit the problem. If somebody you know, is asking me for advice, uh, one of the first things I'll say is go for a long walk. I think it's just a good remedy uh, for a lot of things that ail you. Yes, and I feel that exact same way whenever I go out on a trail, and especially on some of these more rural trails, and then you just get to a break in the trees and you can just look out and it's just forest. I think that's really powerful and amazing, just the views that we have around here as well. And I love the Lytton Trail. It's one of my favorite trails, and I think it exemplifies all of these things that we were talking about, the connectivity, because Again, you can see right here is Sierra College and the multi-use part of this trail is paved and part of it is dirt. And, you know, bikers, I see mountain bikers on it all the time. I see people walking their dogs. Over here is Escaton, which is the senior living. So you have a wide diversity of people also using this trail and enjoying it. And it's, you know, a circular loop so you can get as much or as little out of it as you want. I see, I know some people just do the paved section and that's the perfect distance for them. Some people really enjoy, you know, hiking the whole thing backwards and forward. Again, here's one of the trailheads right near Escaton Village. So it's just a really great trail and I love hiking on it. And again, you do see a lot of people out and about and walking to and from school. It's also right next to the high school. So a lot of you know high school kids use it. It's just a really popular local downtown trail. And it also is, you know, you can walk from one end of the Lytton Trail, downtown Grass Valley and to the new Wolf Creek Trail. And that's, you know, quite a hike using sidewalks or trails. So there is a really big connectivity piece in all this. And I know we're working on some other trails to increase this, um, mileage as well and make sure people are being able to get outside and walk from their neighborhoods into nature. Yeah, the Lytton Trail is a, is a good candidate for expansion both to the east and to the west just because it is pretty long uh, already and it's kind of centrally located. Mm -hmm. So we, it would be great to, to work a little bit more on identifying ways to, to expand it. And you just reminded me when you mentioned the trailhead at Escaton, that's going to be another important piece is um, some a lot of these trails you, you can access from different locations. So this is where the, the trails portal and the website is going to be really important for you uh, trail users out there. So to know how to access the trail. Um, so that yeah, you just reminded me about that. So yeah, specifically, you know, like Hirschman's there's maybe two or three ways to get to that and the tribute trail, same thing and Lytton trail. So you just kind of reminded me that before you go out to these trails, um, take a look at the website, take a look at the trails portal and or purchase the trail cards. So you'll know kind of where you're headed and what to expect. Um, another safety thing, you can just kind of have a ballpark for how long it takes you to walk a mile. So if you know you're going two miles, you're looking at your watch or you're looking at your phone, you can have a sense, oh, it takes me 20 minutes to walk a mile. And uh, if you've already walked really far and haven't got anywhere and it's been 40 minutes, you say, yeah, what? <laughs> something's wrong here. So just little things like that. But yeah, finding out where the trailheads are and where to park, that's another good thing. 
Yes, definitely. And, you know, Trail like Lytton, where it does loop around a couple of times, there are a lot of social trails. It is a, a little easy to get off of the trail, but as long as you're looking at the map and, like Sean said, knowing where you're going, that is a really great tool. So, love the Lytton Trail. Maybe we can look at one more before we wrap up for the day. Would you prefer to talk about Alan Thiessen Trail or? Yeah, let's, do, uh, let's do Alan Thiessen. We can kind of talk about all three, three wonderful offerings from the Land Trust in the Alta Sierra area. Mm -hmm. The uh, Adam Ryan Preserve is at the intersection, uh, parking is at the intersection of Dog Bar and Alta Sierra Drive. It's a wonderful little loop trail. My favorite thing about it is this huge madrone uh sort of at the top of the hill about halfway around there's this wonderful huge madrone up there it's worth the uh it's worth the effort but I, this is very popular i see lots of dogs lots of people walking here um another great example of all the partnerships we work with aspoa which is the property owners association there in alta sierra we worked with a group to put in a pollinator garden which has been doing well. I, actually, I think Felicia did some of that when she was interning with us. Mm -hmm. um, we worked with a Eagle Scout uh, candidate uh, to put in a picnic table. His name was Aaron Stone from a local troop. And that picnic table uh, area to rest is right opposite the pollinator garden. So not only can you do a nice little walk, but you can bring a lunch, you can look at some of the pollinators, look at some of the plants. There's a little path through the pollinator garden. You're invited to, to walk through it. And, and this is another example where we've been doing uh, scotch broom removal, um, Himalayan blackberry removal, and on and on. And we, we're gonna continue to improve this preserve and improve this trail. It's, it's wonderful, it's popular. Go take a look. Uh, get outside, go check it out. Oh, there's Humboldt Lilies there, which mm -hmm. um, one of our executive directors, Erin Tarr, it's like her favorite plant. She loves that. Go take a picture of that. And there's a short little trail that'll take you over to one of the first properties. I think, I believe it is the first property that the land trust got at Mathis Pond. And it's a, it's a small little pond, but it's, it's peaceful. It's nice. There's a short little trail. There's a little kiosk there. And, and, and here again, you're just encouraged to get out, experience nature. We're going to be doing some improvement out there, but it's a great little opportunity to, to get to both of these little preserves. And then uh, we can touch on these a little more, Felicia, but just one more offering not far in Alta Sierra is uh, the Rambler Trail on Clover Valley Preserve. And that's just a little uh, further down a couple roads uh, in Alta Sierra. And you can go check that out. But um, but yeah, Adam Ryan, just for the pollinator garden, um, the madrone tree, uh, it's worth the effort. And uh, we've put in a lot of work in that preserve and, and we hope that uh, you appreciate it when you, when you get out there and you enjoy it. Yeah, this is again, one of my favorite trails. I used to go hiking on this one when I lived on this dog bar road. But my favorite little factoid about this preserve was that it was going to be turned into condominiums. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so you, you should check it out there when you're down in the Alta Sierra area and just imagine this entire hillside would have been condominiums and now it's a wonderful nature preserve and it's permanently protected and there's this wonderful about like two mile trail and it's just amazing thinking of what it could have been and what it is now is just a really great example of the work that the land trust can do and does do in the community. And this yeah, map is on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We're a real, uh, land trust is a powerful organization to, to work with these willing landowners to conserve this land, you know, and, and for me, what, what's important about it for me is the water and the wildlife. Um, yeah. Those are two, two things that uh, are really near and dear to my heart and, and why I think this, this conservation work is, is so important. Yes, and speaking of conservation, again, this trail is located, you know, right on the corner, right kind of at the gateway of Alta Sierra, and 
kind of acts like a fire break because again, it used to be like wall to wall, scotch broom, blackberry. And when we went in there and restored it and removed all these inv invasives, it really opened up the space and minimized the fire danger that was there. And we work with the Alta Sierra Firewise Council on some, you know, scotch broom days. We do burn piles. So again, it's and that serves as an education piece for people in the area. They come out to these firewise days and they kind of learn how they can manage their own property by seeing what we're doing on this piece of land as well. And again, this area is pretty high fire danger in the in South County. So it's pretty cool to see what's going on out there. Yeah, absolutely. I, don't, I wonder if we could dig them up, but I, I hear these stories uh again from aaron when we first got the property that the you know the blackberries are eight feet high and ten feet high and it's a it's just a little trail through the brush i mean it's really uh it's come a long way uh since we first uh got the parcel yes definitely i don't know if you wanted to talk about deer creek tribute trail or hirschman trail one of these you know trails in nevada city or if you wanted to provide some concluding thoughts and we'll wrap this up for today. I think we, I think we can wrap it up. Um, okay. My concluding thoughts are, are just to encourage, encourage us all to get outside and, and get off the screens a little bit and, and experience nature. They, you know, walking, they is one of the best things we can do for our health. Um, there's uh, the surgeon general had this step it up campaign just encouraging people to walk for a half hour, you know, at least 30 minutes a day. Uh, we keep hearing these same uh, studies come out from the American Heart Association, how good it is to just get some exercise. You know, and the Land Trust feels honored to be able to provide these opportunities to our community. Um, so we have these opportunities to learn, uh, to grow, to get healthy, and, you know, just, just to get outside. I mean, it's great for mm -hmm. the kids. Uh, I'm into birds. I'm into learning my wildflowers. And so the opportunities for education also abound. And again, if you find this work uh, valuable, you, you think this is important, uh, please support the work that we do by becoming a member, by donating. Uh, we can't do it without you. And, and again, I wanna keep building new trails. So there's, there's new opportunities for people to get outside. Awesome, well, thank you, Sean, for that amazing summary of uh, the trails and the land trust. We do have a question. What is your favorite bird? Have you seen any fun birds out on the trail or? Uh, yeah, it's, so, it's like your favorite tree. It's so tough to pick some of them. Um, I mean, like the belted kingfisher is cool. I have seen those at Mathis. Of course, some of the larger stuff, great blue heron. Um, well, and then the hawks, you know, the birds of prey are always cool, um, right, the red-shouldered. But um, no, I'd like to learn a little more of my bird calls. So that's what I would say. I'm hearing a lot more songbirds, and I have no clue what they are. Awesome. And speaking of wildlife, we do have a beaver, right, on Mathis Pond. And I don't know if Hirschman has beavers as well, but there definitely are a lot of you know, wildlife out on the trails that you can see and, you know, take pictures of. Yes, and that ties into partnerships. Everything comes back to partnerships. We have, we work with SAIL, um, and they used to, their local uh, academy here, focused on learning, and they uh, used to adopt the Mathis Pond, and there's, uh, there's two beavers in there, and they decided to name um, the beaver Justin. So it's, so it's Justin Beaver, and that, that's pretty funny. Uh, we all need a little humor uh, in our lives. And then um, now they're working over at, at Hirschman's. We'll see if they can come up with some clever names for some wildlife over there. But um, Dawn Zidonis at the city, she had a cool photo of an owl uh, that was out at Hirschman's. And I've done some owl calling, some late night owl calling out there. And there are some owls out there which is another really cool bird. Uh, I don't really know my owls, but again, uh, lots to learn in this world. Another thing for me to look into, but um, yeah, the wildlife abounds. So we'll, we'll keep getting our game cameras out there, our critter cameras, sharing photos with you. We want you guys to share photos with us and we'll keep conserving this land for, for us and for the wildlife. 
Yes, and thanks everyone for joining in on our talk today. Again, if you want to support the Land Trust, consider donating to become a member, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, Thank you everybody.